Hello everyone, I'm The Weather Dude. Welcome back, and today we are shifting over to the Eastern Pacific Ocean to talk about Hurricane Enrique and the areas that it could affect. Before we start with today's video though, be sure to like and subscribe as this does help my channel grow a lot and we're going to get started looking at Hurricane Enrique. Yes, this is <laughs> this is kind of a challenge to uh, pronounce. Sustained winds of 90 miles an hour, 977 millibars of minimum central pressure currently, and it's a pretty slow mover. It is moving uh, due north currently right now at about 6 miles per hour. So Hurricane Enrique is continuing to move to the north and eventually northwest. It's going to kind of steer in the direction of Cabo San Lucas, probably affecting them as a tropical storm, but it's also impacting central and the western coast of Mexico right now, similar to areas that got impacted, if you remember, by one of the strongest hurricanes ever, Hurricane Patricia back in 20, I think it was 2015, um, with, uh, I think it was like 215 mile an hour sustained winds. I could be wrong about the year, but I do know it was a few years ago, and it was a pretty big uh, hurricane when it came on short. So the outer bands of, hur of Hurricane Enrique are likely to produce heavy rains in southwestern Mexico over the next couple of days. Life-threatening flash flooding. We know mudslides are a big common thing that happened down there as well. Um, tropical storm force winds. On the mainland part of Mexico, hurricane force winds will most likely stay offshore. Tropical storm force winds will... Um, still be strong though, 40, 50, 60, mile an hour plus, and gusts could be higher than that. But there's also a hurricane watch for the coast. We are still watching for potential for an occasional hurricane gust, like I said. Um, any swells generated by Enrique are expected to affect the southwestern coast of Mexico during the next few days. We're going to talk about the waves, the wind, the rain, all of it upcoming in this video here. So, looking at the arrival time and also the probability of those winds. Um, so, for the Mexico coast, southwestern coast here, uh, Sunday 2 p.m. It continues to move north maybe by today at 8 p.m. Probably arriving around Cabo San Lucas early Monday morning. Um, if we were to see the tropical storm force winds, that's when they would arrive. Um, the chances of those of that happening about 20-30% chance, which is not all that low. Um, so do watch out for some tropical storm force winds, but they are most likely in this zone right here, which does include part of the southwest or Mexico coastline. All right, and the hurricane force winds, it's a low threat. 10% chance, but it's still there's still a chance, which is why for that region, there is a hurricane watch. But again, the most likely area of hurricane force winds will remain offshore. But even though it's remaining offshore, that still means we're going to see um, hurricane force winds generating those waves that do eventually slam the coast anyway. So either way, you feel the impacts. Now you can notice this cone of past wind strength, how it was going northwest, and it kind of like curved this way. So again, the storm is starting to move north, so it's getting closer to land. I don't think I'll make landfall here. Um, it could. Most likely, it's like some miles have it going up the Baja. Some have it making landfall right on Cabo San Lucas. If it were to go up the Baja, that might actually keep it strengthening a little bit longer, or at least keep it sustained strength, because we know it's going to start weakening from this point forward, most likely, unless there's some miracle rapid intensification. Um, but if it does go up the Baja, at least the waters are warmer there. And this could actually... Get, feed some moisture into the southwest, which does need the rainfall and the moisture so bad. But as you can see from here, the orange does indicate we have seen, this isn't a forecast, this is an observation, we have seen tropical storm force winds so far in the southwestern part of Mexico. So here's a storm right now, uh, 90 mile an hour winds. We are seeing winds gusting to category 3 status, but the hurricane itself is a cat 1. Um, Enrique here, 90 mile an hour sustained winds. It could strengthen a bit further to a cat 2, 100 mile an hour winds, and then maybe with wind gusts up to 120. Um, and then start weakening from there, 80, 70, 60, probably between 40 and 45 mile an hour winds when it goes to Cabo San Lucas, and then Puerto San Carlos, maybe La Paz in the future as well. So again, near that Baja-ish region, and then from there, um, even though this won't like directly track into the southwest, um, usually tropical systems that get near this Baja region do tend to feed some moisture in to the southwest, which desperately needs it. Extreme and exceptional drought is dominating that region, so they do need it. Uh, so, but that'll be for like further down the road because as you can see, the storm center will still be around Cabo San Lucas. This is July 1st in the morning, all right? And I believe that is, yeah, that's Thursday. So we might even be the weekend or Friday of the weekend before we see um, moisture start to head into the southwest. And keep in mind, this is also moving very slow, right? Here it is on 7 a.m. Here it is 7 p.m. Like 12 hours only move that much. And then it might move even slower. Look at this because we start moving in um, 12 hour to one day increments. All right. So again, tropical storm warnings near Puerto Vallarta. Maybe I'm mispronouncing that. 
Um, Mananzillo there, that's pretty much where, I'm pretty sure it's where Hurricane Patricia came on shore, actually, now that I think about it. And then those same areas also have Hurricane Watches, Tropical Storm Watches, a little bit farther north near Tepic. All right, so moving on here to some models. Here's the GFS model. As you can see, the storm does get dangerously close uh, to the southwestern uh, part of Mexico near the coastline region there. It does get pretty close. Um, and then it will continue to move towards the north, all right, towards Cabo San Lucas. But notice how slow it moves. It's just like sitting offshore there. Again, may not be till late Wednesday or even early Thursday before it even comes on shore, according to the GFS model. All right, and then it kind of just fades away as we head towards like Friday in the weekend. Canadian model, we're going to be looking at the sustained wind speed as well. Canadian model, again, over 24 hours. This is late tonight. You can see it gets dangerously close. It might even touch land. Uh, I'm definitely not doubting that. Um, but then it'll start moving northwest again. Now, the Canadian does have it going up the Baja. Um, I think is I think that's not, I think that's what you call the Gulf of California. I could be wrong, but this is the Baja region here. Um, notice how it keeps its strength for a little bit longer because the waters were warmer out there. Um, and then it just hooks a left turn, remains on shore. It kind of just weakens there, just spins out. Man, maybe something on the Atlantic side as well, even though we're not talking about the Atlantic for today. Um, maybe something there in the future. But as for Enrique here, you can see it does move up near Cabo San Lucas, up through Baja, and then moves back on shore. European model... Um, does have it moving north, as you can see right here, pretty dangerously close to the to the Mexico coastline, and then eventually hooking a western turn again. Might not make landfall pretty much same time as the GFS was saying, late Wednesday uh, night, um, and then pretty much sitting there maybe for a day or two before just before stalling out. There could be or stalling out and fizzling out. There could be some low pressures or some weak mid to upper level lows that do come in. And because of the, because of the low, you know what the low goes around like this. So if we have a low pressure, all right, that's sitting here, that's going to keep the storm kind of suppressed. It's going to kind of keep it pressed to the south. So that's why it might move slower. The atmospheric steering is definitely influencing it. So here's a GFS model here. It's some of the sustained wind speeds. You can see kind of like tropical depression, tropical storm strength at this point. Uh, this is Wednesday as the storm is making its landfall. If we look at the Canadian, again, strong tropical storm. And then it kind of weakens a little bit. 1,005 millibars of pressure. That's still, I would say, near tropical storm status. Um, as it goes up the Baja, and it makes its way on shore. As I went over earlier, that's what the Canadian model was saying. Now, the HWRF, I do like this because it's a good intensity model. We're going to look at the sustained winds. But first, let's look at the cyclonic vortex day signature so you can see. Like, I mean, it, it couldn't, like, it, it almost couldn't get any closer. Like, there's the there's the peak of land right there. I would say that's the, that's the western extent, right? Watch as it moves north ever so slightly just misses it all right so we're gonna be watching but again there, there's still gonna be impacts um obviously there's still gonna be storm surge there's gonna be heavy rain and wind um if you do look i believe from the alerts map that same region is under a hurricane watch as well as a tropical storm warning so just note that hurricane conditions are still possible and of course when the low is sitting here like this you're gonna have we're going to have the wind and the surge coming up from this direction as well. So just because the, the storm has moved north doesn't mean the surge can't still come from the south. Then it continues to move north, maybe moving over some of the islands there off the coast of Mexico, also getting dangerously close to them. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a landfall, is it? Actually, that kind of that's a few miles offshore, so pretty much almost landfall. Now, this model has it going through interior land in Mexico. So if we zoom out here, um, kind of like going into this sort of zone kind of like going due north never making that west westward turn again so it just moves north and then that's it it's just going in the mountains so if we look at the wind strength again as you can see right now 90 mile an hour hurricane pretty accurate the winds could get a strong coin to this 90 knots which i do believe is about between 100 and 110 miles an hour or actually could be pretty close to a category three hurricane so yes there would be about 105 mile an hour category two hurricane so pretty close to cat three then it starts uh, weakening a little bit, still moving past the islands here. Very strong tropical storm, uh, 62 knots as it makes landfall in western and northwestern part of Mexico and then moving north and disintegrating. Now, uh, looking at some of these wave heights here, 17, 19, almost pretty much 20 foot waves according to the European model. Um, as you see, it's going to continue to move north. Now, according to the European, of course, as we saw earlier, this will move towards Cabo San Lucas. Now, if they do get lucky, the storm could start stalling offshore and weakening, or it could move over Cabo San Lucas and near La Paz and then start stalling and weakening. 
Um, if it, if the latter, the second option were to happen, then I think it would be a, a bigger threat for Cabo San Lucas because if the storm stalls far enough offshore, we might only we might be lucky enough to only get rain bands. Another reason this is getting steered in this direction is because look at the high pressure that we have, and if you know around the high pressure, the winds go up like this, so it's kind of pushing it in that direction. If the high was farther east and or it was weaker. It would probably end up like the HWRF was saying and just curve into the northwestern part of Mexico. All right, so it all depends on the atmospheric steering as well. Sea surface temperatures, where the storm is right now, about 83, 84, maybe even 85. So maybe if it moves closer to um, the western and northwestern part of Mexico, maybe some strengthening before landfall, upper level winds might be a little bit of a problem. Up to Baja, I would say between 80 and 85, 82 to 85 here. Those darker oranges represent some warmer waters, but look what happens. If it goes west of the Baja Peninsula, we start to see low to mid 70s, not very favorable. So depending on which side of the Baja it goes, will determine the storm strength potentially um, in the near future. All right. So if we look at the wind shear, or the upper level winds looking on the left side, we're used to looking at the right side because the Atlantic, um, you can see some low to moderate shear right now. But as you can see, not too far off to the left is some wind shear and that could uh, take over as the storm is moving away. So even though the waters are pretty warm, upper level winds might be a slight issue. But again, as always, be prepared on the western coast of Mexico, on the Baja Peninsula, uh, and even the southwest. Get ready for some potential moisture from this as well from Hurricane Enrique. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I am the Weather Dude, signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.